Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking different dosing methods and how the heck do you even know how much to dose in the first place? What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now I get asked probably every couple days how much to dose? How do you start dosing? You know, is it worth doing a calcium reactor? You know, where do I start with kelp? Where do I start with, you know, three part? And this is an extremely common question. So I figured today we'd hit up some of the most common ones. Now, the first point is how do you know when you need to start dosing? Now, some people can get quite a ways of just doing water changes. And we're just starting out, that's probably all you need. Now, when you're going to have to start dosing is really going to depend when your water changes are no longer keeping up. If you have a handful of soft corals, you're probably fine. If you're doing, you know, a large water change in a nano on a weekly basis, you're probably fine. But there's going to be a part where your water changes is no longer keeping up that demand. Now, unfortunately, there is no magical answer. You're going to have to test to know. So, you know, test your alkalinity, test it a week later. And if it's dropping, you know, more than half a point, you know, one DKH, you should probably start dosing. Now, knowing how much to dose is, you know, the, always the trickier part for somebody new. If you look at the manufacturer's bottle, they'll say, oh, dose, you know, five mils per however many gallons. But to me, that doesn't make sense because you can have a tank full of, you know, pack full of corals, or you could have a tank with only a couple tiny francs. And they're gonna have extremely different demands. You know, one might require five mils, the next one might require 200 mils of, you know, alkalinity solution. So the only way to know for sure is the test. Um, if you're figuring out your daily dosing, figure it out over a 24 hour period. So for instance, you know, he's got home from work, it's four or five, test your tank. See whatever the alkalinity is. Wait 24 hours, test it again. And that drop, you can pop into a dosing calculator and figure out how much to dose. And that will give you a really good ballpark to start with. So again, you know, like BRS has a dosing calculator. There's a few open source kind of public ones on there. And I'll link a few in the description below. But essentially you would take what your current value is. So today's result and your desired value would be what yesterday's result was. And when you hit calculate, select your desired product, it'll tell you how many grams or milliliters of that solution to dose to bring it back up to that level. And that's gonna be your daily dose. So you could do that over a week, you know, divided by seven, or you could do it over 24 hours and figure out your daily dose if you're doing it by hand or with a doser. So it's a really simple way is just use these dosing calculators and just knowing how to do it. Now, the next big question is, you know, should you use, cal should you use calc, should you use two parts, should you use a calcium reactor? Um, this is one I also see constantly. Now, if you, most people, the probably easiest is either starting with Kalkwasser because it's super cheap, or if you want a little more control, use two or three part. There's a bazillion different brands that are all going to work. You know, I've used, you know, I've used BRS Bulk, I've used Brightwell, I've used, you know, ESV in the past. I've used Calcium House, use Calc, they're all going to work. There's different methods to accomplish the same thing. Calc is probably the simplest for most people to start with because it's one solution. Or there's something like um, Polyp Lab 1 or Alpha Reef, again, one solution, one thing demandingly dose, one dosing pump. So it's a very cheap, easier way to get started with it. Now the benefit of Calc is also boost your pH. Now if you want a little more control, you can go to your two or three part solutions. Now I also get asked a lot about a calcium reactor on a small tank doesn't really make sense. There's a very high upfront cost, but it's very, very cheap long term. If you have, you know, 150, 200 gallon tank plus pack full of coral, then a calcium reactor can make a lot of sense. Now, after the initial cost, it's cost next to nothing to maintain it. You know, every year, year and a half, I get 10 pound bottle of CO2 for 30 bucks, you know, and you know, once every year, a year or so, I'll top off the medium my calcium reactor, you know, you're into it for 60 bucks a year super cheap where if i was paying for dosing you know i'd be into it for four or five hundred dollars probably in supplementation on my tank you know just for instance i had my calcium reactor off for a few days and i was dosing like 200 mils of alpha reef to keep up with it so like it's not as economical on a very large system but it's a great solution on smaller tanks you know that's you know alpha reef is i'm a fan of i'm using it on my nanos tank it's the only thing i'm dosing it gets eight or nine mils a day tank super happy Nano my office, a couple mils a day. Again, super cheap, super economical. So it really depends on your tank size and your coral load. Now, as for calc, um, there's probably some calc dosing calculators, to be honest. Most of the time, I'll just make an educated guess, you know, then wait 24 hours, test again, see where your levels are at. If they're stable, you're in the right spot. If it's trending up, dose less. If it's trending down, dose more. So that makes it kind of really easy. I find when people are new to the hobby, they fixate so much on a number. 
Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Your elk could be at seven, it could be at 12, and your tank could still be perfectly happy. The key is keeping it relatively stable in those ranges. You know, I've at one point, I remember I had a Red Sea Nano 20 gallon, and I didn't test my elk for ages. And one day I tested, it was at like 5.6 or seven or something like that. But the tank looked phenomenal. You know, the acros, the corals, everything, they looked great because it just slowly adapted to it. And that's where it kind of found its happy level. So again, it doesn't really matter where you go. You know, personally, it, you know, anywhere from about 7.8 to eight and a half nines, kind of where I tend to keep the elk in my tanks, you know, calcium, you know, 380 to 450, but try and keep it more of that 420-ish. Magnesium, I usually do about 1350 to say 1450, somewhere in those ranges. And that's kind of where I find my tanks tend to be happy, you know, and everything seems to do pretty well. But the biggest thing is do not fixate on a specific number. Look at the trends. You know, even with like auto testers, people ask me, you know, how accurate is, how is this? You know, I'll put two up and let them go head to head, you know, and usually they're within point one of each other. But at the end of the day, I don't really care specifically which one's right by that point one. It doesn't matter. It's what is the trend? Is it stable? Is it going up or is it going down? So that's the biggest things to kind of pay attention to. Again, some of the dosing calculators, some of the ones I use, I'll link them in the description. If you have any other questions on dosing your tank, you know, what to do, how to do it, drop a question below and I will answer it either in the comments or on a follow-up video. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.